Hello friends, welcome to Forensic Science by Dr. Upesh and in this Forensic Science tutorial, today we are going to talk about fingerprints. All of you have seen fingerprints at so many places, whether there is a crime scene, whether there is a property paper and whether there is Aadhaar card or any other identity proof you need to give your fingerprints. So why do we have fingerprints? Actually this question might be arising in your mind that why do we at all have fingerprints so dear friends as you can see on the screen that these fingerprints are actually the friction ridges you can see the ridges and the furrows so you can see a ridge here and then you can see a furrow here so ridge and the furrows make the friction ridges you know what is friction friction when you need to hold some surface let's say i am holding my mobile so i am holding this mobile because of this friction only because i am having a friction so i can grip i can grab certain thing so that's why the fingerprints are there on our palms and plantar surface on our soles you have seen because when you walk if your surface if your plantar surface let's say your uh, sole is very flat without any friction ridges you may fall you may not be able to walk similarly you may not be able to hold anything if you will not be having these friction ridges so let's go ahead how these friction ridges are formed so as you can see here you know a fingerprint is nothing but is an impression left by the friction ridges now you know what are friction ridges so fingerprint is something when we hold something when we touch something so we leave our friction ridge impression over there that's what we call uh, the fingerprints and they are easily deposited on any type of surface whatever you touch you may see it you may not see it so sometimes whenever you are able to see the fingerprints let's say you are having an inked impression you are putting the inked impression onto some paper or somewhere so you can see those fingerprint but when you can't see when you are touching any glass surface or any other surface desk or anything so you can't see they are known as invisible or the latent prints so the friction ridges are of so much of importance so the fingerprints are used as a trace evidence you know whenever a crime being committed or whenever a culprit a perpetrator is there on the crime scene he touches several objects you might be thinking that what about when he is wearing gloves okay let's say he is wearing gloves then the fingerprints minute traces of the fingerprint will be there inside the gloves but it is very difficult to identify a person or a culprit on the basis of those glove print but in many of the cases when you approach the crime scene as a culprit so what happens you touch the door handles and everything you may not be walking with the gloves with the mask all over around because you will become so much identifiable then so what you will be doing you will be walking as such and you will be entering into the uh, through the door into the compartment into the premises through the door and you will try to open that uh, with your hands and you will impart your friction ridge impression or fingerprints onto that surface whichever you touch it so fingerprint is a kind of trace evidence you will be astonished to know that only human beings are having fingerprint other than one animal which is that animal koala friends koala is that animal which is having the fingerprints like human beings but what happens you may not accuse a koala for any crime may you no you will not you cannot say in the courtroom that i was not present at the crime scene a koala was present no it is you human beings so all the population except for certain cases where the genetical disorders are there so we do not have fingerprints in those cases but otherwise you are having the fingerprints all over around so your palmar surface or your plantar surface can have these friction ridges and the study of these friction ridges is known as dactyloscopy you know these are your dactyles and the study of these friction ridges over these your dactyles is known as dactyloscopy so fingerprint science is also known as dactyloscopy so fingerprints are formed from the two layers of skin one is the dermis dermis is the lower layer whatever you can see on the upper side is actually the epidermis and whatever beneath the epidermis is the dermal layer so friction ridges are generated from the dermal layer of the skin and then they give this shape to the epidermis which is also having several layers and where the ridge pattern is actually arranged if you will see this this is an image this is an image of the volar pads of the uh, fingers of a fetus in the mother's womb 
during the gestation okay when you are in your mother's womb then during the gestation you have there is a process of uh, formation of these friction ridges so there are volar pads have you ever seen when you uh, when you blow any balloon and when when you squeeze or it suddenly blasts off so it leaves the crease marks so what is happening here is the same thing the volar pads are there during the gestation third or fourth month of gestation so maybe uh, by the time eight weeks so after eight weeks you will be having these volar pads and slowly within the third and fourth month of gestation they will give rise to particular type of fingerprint pattern studies are still going on that whether they are genetically transferred or not means uh, whether your your fingerprints are matching with your i'm only talking about the patterns not actually everything in the fingerprint matches so whether these fingerprints are matching with your parents either of the parents or both of the parents but studies are going on but there is no concrete proof right now that they are genetically transferred but oh because some genes are there which are regulating the particular type of pattern what will be formed and the movement of the child movement of the fetus in the womb actually create these pattern so yes of course there are so much of biological importance as well now this i have already talked about so what we call them as volar pad symmetry so volar pad actually not only create the fingerprint but more probably it is thought that they actually uh handles with the you know the topology the outer surface that what will be the type of the pattern which will be created and then here is a cross sectional area of the skin which you can see which is having certain pores and the hair shaft but you do not have hair here uh, on your palmer and the plantar surface so we have the sweat pores and you can see the sweat pores over there what i if i move my cursor here you can see the sweat pores are attached to the sweat glands and sweat glands are continuously secreting the sweat to maintain the body temperature okay even if you will rub your hands slightly like this or you will open and close your palm you can see with the help of a microscope which i will show you in the next lecture of mine of the series about the fingerprints that how the sweat is being secreted from the sweat pores even with very minute movement of your hand the sweat pores becomes active and your sweat is secreted now what is the composition of sweat the composition of sweat is mainly water 99.09% is water then you have the organic matter in organic matter you have your fatty acids you have your amino acids and you have the oils and other things and sodium chloride in inorganic constituent it is mainly sodium chloride have you ever tasted your sweat it is slightly salty because of the sodium chloride contents in the sweat and then you have urea the waste product the sweat is an waste product and also it is for maintaining the body temperature then you have calcium phosphate then you have magnesium phosphate sulfates potassium carbonate and so many things now these are those things in the sweat which actually makes them visible on a surface where they are not visible when you have the latent fingerprints encountered on a crime scene you apply certain chemicals and any of the chemicals which we will study in the later stages any of these chemicals are going to react with any of these constituents what have been discussed here and then developing the fingerprints now ridges as you can clearly see the ridges the ridges on the epidermis is dotted with sweat pores and is connected to the dermis so the question here is can we change our fingerprints so the answer is no you cannot you can damage them if you will burn your hand to third degree till the dermal layer your dermis will be burned and there will be a permanent scar or you cut your uh, skin to the dermal layer so there will be a permanent scar there will be no growth of friction ridges again but what happens if there is only a cut or any injury on the epidermal layer on the epidermis then the friction ridges will regain in the same position as they were before so the outer layer is the dead skin and the inner layer is the generating layer of the epidermis and the ridge formation as we have discussed happens in the third or fourth fetal month and by the seventh month of gestation they are completely developed now this is another diagram which you can see it after pausing this video you can see that how the dermal papillaries are there okay and this is the structure of the skin which you can see the major thing what we will discuss 
uh, here is the sweat glands and the sweat pores and of course the friction ridges which actually form the particular fingerprint pattern now what are the function of these friction ridges as i told you they strengthen the dermal structure first of all to resist wear and tear of the skin so firstly they are on the surface area on the epidermis so that our dermal layer will be more secure the second thing they help in the process of evaporation by keeping the sweat pores open and the complete closing of the sweat pore only happens after death because we keep on moving we keep on talking we keep on walking or we keep on doing something we call we keep on breathing so what happens actually to maintain that body temperature it's the sweating may be uh, more or less depending upon the temperature in the environment but they are open and they are completely closed after the death so this is the difference when you can identify a fingerprint of a dead person from a fingerprint of a live person and of course they help in the sense of touch so you have the neurons all over your body running through the nerves and your nervous system is working on that regularly so what is happening for the sense of touch when you touch something you feel it with the help of these friction ridges they provide you the grasping power which we have discussed earlier and they are the basis of your individual identification you think they are the friction ridges only which is helping you in grasping no they are very unique to you they are so individual that no two persons in this world even the same person in this world in the two fingers can have the similar fashion of the friction ridges all over around so why do we use fingerprint in forensic science or what is the science of fingerprint why do we use them the first is the persistency they are permanent they only get completely decomposed when the body decomposed after death otherwise they remain as such throughout the life from your birth when we say from the cradle to the grave from the birth till the end of your life they remain same you cannot change them okay so they are permanent so if a crime has been committed by a perpetrator 10 years back and now he says my fingerprints are changed no he cannot say that so fingerprints remain similar all over the time throughout the life and they form during early fetal life so they are not formed after once you are out of the womb so you cannot change them again and they remain constant they remain even after that and they are highly individual in nature so with these words i will finish the first lecture of the fingerprints and we will be coming with the more lecture one after the other about the fingerprints and i hope if you need a certificate of being a fingerprint expert then just drop a comment in the comment section that you want a certificate of a fingerprint but after the completion of this course i will provide you a certification and we'll meet again thank you